Well, good evening, everyone. Hello, this is Paula D'Amico, the president of the Buffalo Niagara chapter of NABO. That's the National Association of Women Business Owners. So happy to see that you are joining us this evening. And we'll give it just a couple of moments for uh, some of our friends to jump on. Every Monday, we have the Monday Member Spotlight, and we put the spotlight on one of our members who are doing, you know, they all do phenomenal things. And, and this week, um, like many other weeks in, in this past month, we are celebrating Black History Month by shining the spotlight on one of our members who is, a, she is not only is she a woman of color, but she is a woman of multi levels. She has her own business and she's got her hand in all sorts of areas of the community. I don't wanna waste any more time uh, without showing her and it is Kenyatta David. Kenyatta, we are so happy to have you here this evening. Thank you so much for joining us on the Monday Member Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited. Now, you know, when we first met and uh, and I was learning a little bit about you, I knew that you were the founder of 8118. Mm -hmm. And then we got a chance to, to attend a gathering together uh, just a few weeks ago. And then I found out about all the many other things <laughs> that you do on top of that. I thought I was a busy lady. You, my dear, are an extremely busy lady. But let's begin by talking a little bit about uh, your business. So for the ladies at home, our NABO sisters, and those that are just jumping on to see what NABO is all about, uh, Kenyatta is one of our newer members. And Kenyatta, why don't you give us an idea of what is 8118 all about? Okay, sure. So 8118 is a boutique marketing firm in that it focuses on email marketing specifically, and it services women entrepreneurs or female entrepreneurs. So the focus and all the work that's done is to teach female entrepreneurs how to make money with email marketing. So we do that at an organization level, going in and doing workshops and different trainings within organizations or companies. And then for, uh, the female entrepreneur directly that's not affiliated with an organization or not affiliated with a the company, there is the Female Marketing for Entrepreneurs Academy where there are uh, master classes, um, hands-on training, uh, group coaching, different supports to help uh, female entrepreneurs not only uh, get a return on investment, but earn a profit. That is the goal all the time. I was so enthralled with listening to all the things that you've been doing. So that's 8118, but what are some of the other things that you, other um, connections that you've made with the with the community? So sure, um, I am an adjunct professor at Madai College. Um, I teach in the business management and leadership department uh, where I teach marketing management to juniors. I'm also in the interdisciplinary studies department where I teach critical thinking to freshmen and global leadership to seniors. Uh, through junior achievement, I teach at International Prep, um, the Be, Entre Be Entrepreneurial Program. Um, and that program breaks down um, uh, creative thinking, uh, think like an entrepreneur and rapid business planning. Um, I'm the president of the National Black MBA Western New York chapter um, and associated with different organizations, including NAVO, excitedly, uh, in the Western New York area. That's amazing. I mean, so much, you're doing so much in truly making a difference in the community for, with um, with helping helping Western New Yorkers of all age levels, right? I would mm -hmm. say, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you, you're obviously with, um, with Madai College and some of the other organizations that you're working with, you're bringing in the younger generation, you're helping to educate them and you're helping them to push further and open up their eyes on what they can do with their own careers uh, or start their own business. So let's let's focus back back to 8118 and, and your business. What inspired you? What made you want to take that leap of faith and start your own business versus jumping on a bandwagon with another marketing firm? Well, I am all about relational marketing. I like connecting with folks. I like building authentic relationships. I like um, 
the idea of getting away from transactional marketing. And I started at a higher level with digital marketing and it was it was too broad. I couldn't service um, folks the way I wanted to because digital marketing is affiliate marketing, it's email marketing, uh, it's social media, it's a bunch of different things. Um, but specifically with email marketing, it has the highest rate of return um, for every dollar spent. And it's such an easy, a very, the low hanging fruit when it comes to connecting and having conversations with the people who want to buy your products or pay for your services. So I, um, I shifted into specifically email marketing to teach women that it doesn't have to be anything um, that we overthink that we we have conversations every day with each other we know how to talk to each other we know how to market we know how to sell we just have to to do that in email and i am loving that transition that i made absolutely Excellent. It. well it sounds like a lot of your your customer base is is woman orientated would i say mm -hmm. that i mean i mean your your students would be from all different ages and backgrounds but there's a lot of focus on women in business and that's that's really important. Uh, so would you say that, um, you know, women are, are usually uh, the ultimate multitaskers. We're ready to do a million things and our, our minds sometimes go in a million different places. So to kind of zero in, to help somebody zero in and do marketing, that's kind of a tough task, I would have to say. Yes and no. Yes, in that um, looking at it on a broad scale marketing, it can be overwhelming when you're thinking about who likes this, who needs that. But when you start having conversations, like authentic conversations with people, um, specifically people that are interested in what you do, that you can serve them, it makes it a lot easier because then a lot of the weight is lifted off. You're, you know what's happening. So I would say... Um, with female entrepreneurs, I really focus too on um, diversity, equity, and inclusion because even though it's you know I service females, we're diverse. We're diverse in ethnicity. We're diverse in uh, religion, in ability, in backgrounds, um, and creating an uh, a equal opportunity for everyone to succeed with email marketing. So it becomes easier when you have good relationships, when you really nurture relationships, it's really not hard to market because you understand what they want, what they need, um, why they buy, which is huge. Um, knowing, you know, what, what are the motivators? Is it emotional? Is it rational? And having these conversations, like taking the time to build those relationships, it marketing becomes easier when it's relational. Absolutely. Hands down. I, I think we all find that, uh, you know, building those relationships, whether it's with your client or whether it's with the community becomes so uh, invaluable. You can't, you can't do any better than have a great relationship with someone. You know, we had Nik Nikia Cook is, is jumping on right now. She says hello to all of us as long as well as uh, Sherry Bar Mac is on as well. And when Nikia and I were talking last week, we were talking about building those relationships and that level of trust. And, and that's with finances. Now, Kenyana, with you, it's, it's, it's a little different, but still delivering that, still making sure you create that, that relationship is so, so important. Sure. This, you know, any industry, you have to build that no like trust. You know, you have to, um, they have to know you, they have to feel like they know you, not what you offer and have no idea that you have children, you know, or they have no idea that you live in Western New York. Like that's at the baseline, that's weird. You know, like they have to know you, they have to like you because, you know, Folks don't buy from you if you don't like you and they have to trust you. You know, they have to trust that you are being authentic, that you genuinely want to help them, that um, you want to have a relationship with them, you know, before, during and after they purchase something from you um, and trust that you are who you say you are. You know, businesses pop up every day. Um, so it's, you know, relationships they are so important. They're they're important before you you know sell anything to someone. Just creating an authentic relationship. I can't um, 
for me and my business, it really works on relationships. It works on personality. It works on um, how things are done, you know, and it all comes down to, you know, how you relate to others. So absolutely, I stand by relationships to the end. <laughs> so do I, absolutely. So let's backtrack a little bit because we've got quite a few people that have just jumped on for the first time and they may be wondering, um, oh, Kenyatta, I think I, I saw something on, on Nabo about Kenyatta joining the group and and what is this 8118 LLC? So if I jumped on your website, what services am I looking at? What am I what am I looking at that you're providing for uh, for me or for other business owners? So the primary thing that I um, provide is the female marketing uh, for entrepreneurs academy, the Fem Academy, and it is designed to super serve the female entrepreneur who wants to make money with email marketing. So. The work that's done in the in the academy, it's membership based. Every month there is a master class, there's a group coaching, there's some co-working, um, there is a lab where there's some action um, items that you can get involved with. There is um, a community within that, and the goal is to support, not only educate. Um, educate female entrepreneurs of, you know, identifying their superpowers, how they communicate, what their authentic voice is, but using that to communicate with their buyers and to ultimately make money within their business in a way that they're comfortable with, in a way that they feel good about, in the way that they feel like they can do it again and again and again. And it's not, it's something that becomes um, innate for them as opposed to you know, a tip, a best practice, a tip, something they're just trying to to hustle um, in their business. But they, um, they're able to communicate what they offer so they can market and then they can sell. So the academy is the primary um, offering for female entrepreneurs. I do, um, do connect with organizations to uh, do programming, um, in small groups or large groups, but for the female entrepreneur, the academy is where um, where I send the female entrepreneur to 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 connect with her and, and help her reach those goals that she has. So this is a because I'm trying to wrap my head around it, and some other people might be able to uh, you know to relate. So. If I'm um, I'm a business owner and I'm reaching out to you and what you're doing is you're teaching me, you're teaching me a better way to connect with my clients, a better way to sell my product mm -hmm. um, and a better way to sustain that business. Is that right? Absolutely. A way to communicate what you have to offer um, and tying in how you how you sell or how what your personality style is, how you communicate, um, finding that authentic voice and using it to, yes, grow your business, um, scale your business uh, with email marketing. Authentic, finding your authentic yourself. That's, that is, um, I think that's a buzzword, I have to say, I think over the past couple of years. And, um, and, and that's really hard for people to find their authentic self, isn't it? It's like you, I'm sure you're you're working with um, with some of your clients where you're literally helping to peel away some of the layers to help them get to their authentic self so that they can put themselves out there, right? Oh, for sure, for sure. I think um, we go through different stages where our voice changes. We become more confident um, as our business grows. We um, we're more sure-footed. We're more competent. We have um, better ways of communicating. Our audience sometimes changes. They go from maybe um, the majority might have been in that awareness stage, and now you know they they pass the the decision making stage, and they're still with us. And the conversation is different. So authenticity it it does change, um, but constantly engaging in what that looks like for you. Um, and, and finding out 
how you communicate. For me personally, it took a long time. You know, I was, I'm very informal. I like to use words like folks and jam. And I like to just have that honest laugh, that good knee slap belly laugh. Um, but in, in the beginning, you know, that was considered unprofessional as opposed to my authentic voice. So, you know, becoming comfortable with that, uh, it took some time. And I think with the academy, it gives an opportunity um, to unpack that. You know, if this is how you sound, put it, you know, put it in words. What does that look like? Send it out, see what people think. And also being comfortable uh, making mistakes. I think with email marketing, one of the things that um, has been a big conversation is what if I send out the wrong thing? What if I misspell something? What if I forget a link? You know, it's the stress to be perfect and none of us are perfect. So it's kind of paralysis by analysis. We think of all the things that can go terribly wrong. And, you know, you send out something with a misspelling, you know, you send out a new email and say, oops, you know, apparently I don't know how to spell this word. And I bet you your bottom dollar, somebody's going to respond and say, I misspell that word all the time. Every single time I misspell the word, you know, so it's connecting um, with your authentic self. You know, we make goofs all the time. So uh, in the academy, really focusing on how to be comfortable with you and how you do things and how you communicate um, and, you, and comfortable with your audience. You know, understanding your audience and um, knowing that they like, you know, that they like you. They want to hear from you. They are OK if you misspell a couple of words. They're, they'll be fine. They're not going to not buy from you because you misspelled a word more often. Isn't, isn't it funny how someone if you excuse me, I got an itch on my eye. But it, isn't that funny how when you uh, when you make a mistake, you almost think that when you've sent that email out, oh, gosh, no, you know, it's like the end of the world when it really isn't. And right. you're right. We're all human. We all make mistakes. Uh, and and we, if you're just saying, well, I just misspelled the word. And I, apparently, I just can't spell today. And somebody else most likely will jump on and say, you know what, that word's always a trouble word for me, too. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk about... Um, you being such the inspiration that you are, because I find you very inspirational, not just motivational, but inspirational. And what you do for, you know, for your community, what you do for your students, what you do for your clients. But let's just talk about Kenyatta for just a moment. So before you jumped into that business, uh, how did you, how did you find your authentic self? How did you tap into that? Oh, my. So if I'm very transparent with you and all the folks that are on this call, I just found it within the last couple of years. I'm 39. You know, it took some time. Um, it took some time to not only find it, but to get comfortable with it. You know, it's, it's kind of always been there, but sometimes it didn't fit in, in certain communities. It didn't fit uh, at certain jobs. Um, so it felt wrong. But a part of that process was just um, starting to listen. I think once I just started to listen to what I liked and I didn't like and things that resonated with me, then I started to listen to my opinions about it. Not those like copy and paste, not those things you should say, but some things like, for example, email marketing is really not that hard. You know, that's the unpopular thought. But when I listen to myself, I'm thinking it's not rocket science. It It's a message, you know, mm -hmm. so it took a long, a long time, arguably. Um, but just the last couple of years, and it just started with listening to myself, um, trusting that this is, this is your, this is your thought, you know, it, whether you like it or not, this is what you think about something. And then um, and then just trusting that it's going to be okay. It's going to, somebody's going to like it. Somebody's not going to like it. Like just being comfortable with that. But it took a long time. It wasn't something I've always had at all. Yeah, it's always uh, life is a journey, right? And sure. we we discover things as we as we move along down this down this path of life. And I would have to say that probably 
when you're discovering yourself and you're discovering um, what you really want to do, and then you put yourself out there, you know, you were talking about trust and, and you want others to trust you too. And in, in, in guests in the past, we've been talking over this past month in under the umbrella of Black History Month, there are so, and women across the board uh, feel this way. And it's not just a Black History Month thing. It's, it's when you walk into a room and there are, you've got a room full of, it could be men or whomever that question who you are and your and your credentials. Do you, have you ever felt that? Have you ever felt like when you walk into a room or you had a prospective client and they, they just kind of, they, they're questioning you and, and how do you, how do you, how do you proceed? How do you, how do you kind of win their trust over? You know, that it's funny that you asked me that because I've always had a quietness about me. I'm not a, a resume lister. Um, I, I I wouldn't talk about it unless somebody asked me. To this day, it's the same way. Like, I don't feel the need to compete with people in the room. You know, I come in, I show up the same way. Um, the way folks see me here is the way they'll see me in Target and the way they'll see me at an event. So I show up to to connect with folks and have a good time. Um, and when when I'm in those spaces where they're shifting their weight around, you know, whether it's education or it's position, I don't really feel the need to compete. You know, I I am comfortable with what I know. I'm comfortable with where I'm at in life. I don't feel the need to compete in the conversation. I still feel that. Um, I'm going to show up, you know, if, if an opportunity comes to me, I am in the running, you know, having, um, a quiet confidence sometimes in business is better than having a loud confidence because no one knows what to expect, you know? Um, so for me personally, I, I never feel the need to compete. I just, I just show up and I have conversations and like the event that we were at, you know, someone asked, but it wouldn't be, you know, someone says, oh, well, I have this degree and I, oh, me too. I don't, I never felt that need to do that. It makes me feel weird. Um, but I do, I do think trusting that you are who you say you are and your resume does not have to precede you that, you know, you are enough, you know, you are enough and you can take up space in the room without telling everybody what your position is, how much money you make, if you're married or not. Those things aren't really um, necessary, uh, in, in my opinion. And, and that has worked for me, but that's also because, you know, in part with who I am, that's my personality. I, I, I'm not a weight shifter at all. It feels weird to me when I try it. I've tried, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> I don't like it. So. Like my uh, my favorite life coach, uh, my personal life coach, Nancy Rizzo says, you know, you are worthy and deserving. If you mm -hmm. feel that way, you it's almost you don't have to put on the airs because you know you're meant to be in that place and you have the credentials to to back up who you are. And there's no need to really flaunt it. It it is what it is, right? Right. And you know what? Sometimes I don't think um, I don't think sometimes we. I give credit to the rooms that we're in. You know, we feel the need to compete in the room that we're in, but the room that we're in is because we are deserving, because we have the credentials, because we have um, met all the requirements, because we are enough. We uh, we don't think about, I'm in this room because of those things and, and trying to shift your weight in a room where everyone knows that you are, uh, you're enough. You don't have to do all that. So, that's let's talk. Let's talk about um, let's talk about having a business to, in the midst of a pandemic. So you know things have changed for everyone, whether it's their business plan, whether it's their approach, whether it's their income. You know, it's just it's all it's all bets are off. Everything's out the window. Um, well, maybe not everything is out the window, but things have definitely changed. So how has things how have things changed for you during the pandemic? I think it made me more courageous. I I started with, you know, in a few years I'll do this. 
or, you know, add some more years, I'll do that. When the pandemic happened, what do you have to lose? Just go for it. You know, get that coach, uh, get that program, learn that skill. So for the for me, for the pandemic is is my biggest investment time in um, in learning and figuring out how I can um, accelerate my growth. You know, I know what the challenges are against me, but now that I know I have nothing to lose, what do I really want to do? Nothing is far fetched at this point. So. I, the pandemic made me courageous. It took me out of my comfort zone and challenged me to think outside the box. How are you going to do this? You know, and then what do you really want to do? Do you really want to do things this way? Um, before the pandemic, I was doing one-to-one -one services and I thought that that was the way, you know, we were just kind of in the grind. That's what was happening. And then um, with the pandemic, it's, do you want to do this? If you say no, what do you have to lose? So for me, the, the pandemic, uh, it supported my long-term business goals. I think that's, you know, saying that it's made you more courageous. I think almost every woman that's on here could, and every woman that's watching can, can understand and can, can relate. It's, it, it's almost like the pandemic gave us, it gave us a break. Mm -hmm. And it gave us the chance to sit back for a moment and kind of just look at things in a different perspective and maybe come up with a different game plan that gives us that courage that pushes us forward for sure. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, Nikia, you have, oh, Nikia, I'm sorry, Kenyatta, I'm looking at Nikia's name. Uh, you have been a member of, of NABO for uh, just, a, just a few months, and we are so happy that you're with us. And so NABO is a, is a sisterhood. There's there's a lot that goes on, and and we've been in the midst of this pandemic, but that sisterhood still sustains and still maintains, and we support each other. Just out of curiosity, as you step into this group, what would you um, what would you like to see? What experiences are you hoping to to have as member of NABO? I'm really just hoping to connect to connect with folks. Uh, in Western New York, in Buffalo, um, to connect um, with folks outside at a national level. I'm really excited about conference um, this fall. Um, that's that's my goal. That's my interest. That's my focus. That's what I'm preparing for is, is to, to build those authentic relationships. Um, there's a connection already um, as far as owning a business and just creating those relationships and the ones that I have, nurturing them, um, you know, taking opportunities. I know uh, Janique just did uh, an event um, that I got to go to, um, Sherry, Nakia, some folks that I already know, uh, Stephanie. Um, so that's, that's always my focus in anything that I enter. And I think anything else that I can dream of kind of follows with those good relationships. So for me, I want to connect with everybody. <laughs> and we want to connect with you for sure. Uh, I just think you're amazing. And we've had such great conversations already. So mm -hmm. I can't wait for a whole bunch more when we get together again, whether it's, you know, virtually or in person. I'll probably see you in person over at Cherry's office because you're right around the corner for me. So I'm excited about that. We're so close. Mm -hmm. But with just um, just a couple of minutes left, I'm going to ask you to give um, maybe some words of wisdom or a bit of advice for some of the ladies out there that are business owners that are maybe just starting or maybe have, have sustained their business for a long time. This is a time of courage, you said. Mm -hmm. So um, what advice would you have for them right now? Trust the process. You know, it's it's a patience game. You know, it's not, it's not a sprint. It's definitely a marathon and things change. Um, but being patient, um, being open-minded, being agile um, is so important. You know, there are things that um, we can speed up the process, but it, it's not always worth it. You know, um, so I think for me, that's the biggest thing that I had to learn is everything in due time and do the work, focus on the work, focus on the goal 
and just riding it out, you know, whether it takes a year or 10 years, you know, everyone's journey is different, but just being patient, being focused, um, surrounding yourself with people that respect the process, that give you your space to do it in your time um, is very important. Timing is everything. It is. It really is. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, you've given me uh, quite a bit of courage as we had our conversation this evening, thinking about how the pandemic kind of is pushing us in different directions. And, and with all the wonderful things you do, being a teacher and owning your own business and just having your hands in, in so many uh, different areas of the community. I know I'm going to go over by a couple of minutes here, but um, let's talk just real briefly about your connection to the community. What are some of the things that you um, have done and continue to do to make that connection? Because it's so important for us to be out there, to be connected with our community, let them know that we're there for them as well as you know they are there for us, right? So um, what, what have you been doing lately? Um, so I am definitely involved in the community at different levels. Um, when it's uh, the hands-on level, I, um, I absolutely love on Mona's house. And that's for um, a safe, brave space for um, women who've been victimized by sex trafficking or just trafficking. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I really love on that organization. Um, Open Buffalo, I, I'm involved with that as, as, uh, as often as I can be. And they're in doing, uh, doing the work. Um, but also, you know, I, you have to be that change you want to see. So I serve on the boards of Junior Achievement, uh, Girl Scout, the Center of Entrepreneur Leadership, um, very involved in, in committees um, from the diversity, equity, and inclusion committee to the golf committee. You know, like just wow. being um, being involved in having a good time, getting to know what the needs are, um, not only in your business, but what other things are people thinking about? You know, what other challenges are they experiencing um, that leads to those objections for your business. You know, it, it doesn't always lead to sale, but understanding um, what they are dealing with and being a part of that solution. So I love on the community. I, I, I love being involved. Um, I am as active as I can be even uh, during uh, COVID times, you know, whether it's a Zoom call or in person with our mask, I'm here for all the things. Um, so to me, community um, is so important, and, and especially as a business, you know, understanding what's happening in the community and the concerns and um, the challenges that lead to the problems that you're solving with your problem with, or, you know, your product or service is huge. It's huge. It's everything. Um, but it's building that know, like, trust as a person, you know, and that's, that's more important to me um, than the other things is, you know, being in the community and people feeling comfortable um, with with me being around, you know, they say, oh, I, I you know, I know who you are and um, th they can like, you know, what I'm doing or like me and they can trust that I'm not hiding behind a computer, you know, or I'm not hiding behind a business and they never, you know, I'm all pro female, but you never see me at, at female led events. Um, so that that's huge for me. Well, we're so happy that you're a part of our NABO community as well as such a integral part of the Western New York community. And so for the ladies that are watching, whether it's uh, right now live or their instant replay, they're watching it on YouTube or watching it on uh, on Facebook here a little later on today. Kenyana, if somebody is interested in getting a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? So I am active, but I am completely accessible. Um, you can reach me by email at my first name, Kenyana at 8118. Um, all things having to do with 8118 is, uh, that's the extension, 8118 social media or Kenyana David. So um, yeah, you can reach out to me with just those two uh, LinkedIn. I'm the most active on, um, but all the other platforms, whatever is your jam, you know, however it's easiest for you. I love a good conversation. Um, not only just about email marketing, but just 
being a female, being a female entrepreneur, living in Western New York, whatever you want to talk about. I love a good conversation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kenyatta, for joining us this evening. We went a little over, folks, but we couldn't help it because Kenyatta <laughs> had so much to say and such wonderful stuff and just so inspirational as well. So hopefully you have taken everything that she's talked about. And if you want to reach out to her, she just gave you her information. We will also post it uh, here on Facebook later on today. So you can reach out to her if you feel um, that you want to connect her with her for, well, for business or or just for good conversation. Uh, so Kenyatta, David, so much. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, next weekend, we uh, only one guest this week. And next Monday, we are going to have Sherry Barmack with us. And some of you uh, Nabo sisters may be familiar with, with Sherry. Kenyatta and I just spoke about her just a little bit ago. She is Nabo's immediate past president. She is also a business owner. And she is helping us mark Women's History Month, which begins in March. So we are so happy that she will be joining us uh, to share with us a bit of wisdom, well, probably a lot of wisdom. And uh, she is one of the most, uh, she is one of the best people I know here in Western New York. Not only is she well connected, but she always offers a plethora of information for you to kind of go, hmm, and maybe I should do that. So she is a she is definitely a great supporter of women in business as well. Kenyatta, again, thank you so much for joining us. Ladies, thank you for joining us live here on Facebook. Remember, every Monday, we put the spotlight on a NABO member, and we can't wait to see you next Monday right here at about 6 o'clock live on Facebook. Mm -hmm.